like the prodigal son. I wandered in darkness. I traded my life for a world of good time. No peace in my heart I ever could find. And I got so tired eating after the swine. From Jesus, but the shepherd sought me through the heat and the cold. The ninety and nine he left in the fold to find this lost sheep that was hungry and cold. lovely song. Today I just had a short little message. I'd like to take it out of Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to take four verses right here. uh, Verse 20 all the way to 23. And see what Daniel said after God revealed the secret unto him about the king's matter. He said, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of the God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. God has all power, all wisdom. There's nothing that takes God by surprise. I mean, if you want wisdom, you got to go to God. If you want understanding, you got to go to God. If you want more love and grace, you got to go to the Lord. You got to cry mightily to God, and he will bless you right there. For wisdom and might are his right there. And he's going to take care of of this world. We see the devil seems like he has the upper hand, but God has a plan. In any matter in our life, in our government, in the way we live every day, what's gonna happen in this world, seems like the Muslims are growing and false religions are growing and the atheists are growing and the homosexuals are growing and all kinds of liberals and things like that is growing and growing and growing. But you got to remember what the Bible says. God sets up the king. God takes the king away. Right there, the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand right there. And he can control anybody. He can control the devil. And he, he can use the devil as a puppet. And you got to remember that the kingdom of this world is the kingdom of the devil right now. 
but Jesus will come and take this kingdom right here and he will renew this earth. Thank God for that. He's going to take care of all the problems. There's a lot of things we don't understand in this world. We, we live in this life. We are we was born dying. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Our body began to die when we was born. And it just it just takes a long time for it to die. Eventually it's gonna die. God's got a plan for us to die. We can speed this process up. If we don't live right, or maybe if we don't eat right, if we don't take care of our body, and if we live like the devil and keep on continuing like we are. God can destroy this body, the Bible says. Especially as a Christian, it's guaranteed. He said that if we don't live right in our bodies as Christians, God can destroy this old body. He won't destroy our souls because we're saved forever. We're pure on the inside. But he will allow the devil to destroy this body. And he told a man in Corinthians chapter 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, that give him over to Satan that for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Our spirit is saved and we're going to go to the day of the Lord Jesus and we're going to go to heaven regardless what the devil says but the devil can destroy our body. God can let the devil loose on our body and sometimes the Lord allows the devil to afflict us for righteousness sake. Not only just because of our sins for righteousness sake, he'll get, we'll get the good, he'll get the glory. Just plain and simple as that, just like in Job's day. That seems so harsh, that seems so tough for Job. That was the toughest thing that Job ever went through, I guarantee you. Job ain't never experienced nothing like that, but he come out on top. God doubled everything he had, gave him new children right there, doubled his life, blessed his life. He saw his Seed up to the third and fourth generation right there. He lived a long life. And by his testimony, many souls were saved right there by the testimony of Job. And Job is mentioned in the New Testament. Remember the patience of Job right there. So think about that. And so this Daniel was faithful like that too. And remember the patience of, of Daniel right here. The things that he encountered, the things he went through. God blessed him through the whole thing. But he... He went through some troubles. The devil tried to kill him. Things like that. But the lions could not eat him. Just plain and simple. It says, verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God, God forever and ever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord has always been. There's not a time that Jesus and God has not been. They've always been. We can't understand it. That's not for us to understand in our mind. God did not allow that to really register in our mind how that could be possible. But we know he's from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God right there. And he'll always remain. And the very center of everything is God. Remember that. And the closest position that you can get is what Jesus got is on the right hand of God. Think about that. Think about it. God has always been in a close position is Jesus Christ and the center of everything is God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's spiritual things right there. The center of everything. God has all power in heaven and earth. Just think about his creation is a witness to mankind. I mean, all the things that he created. Y'all know how he created this? He spoke it into existence. He melted it into existence. I mean, you see the molten rock he, the, uh, on a certain day that the dry land appeared. I believe them rocks come out of the earth. It was without form. And God formed it by his mouth. He, he let, let the dry land appear and it appeared. Right there, it's plain and simple as that. And he and, uh, invented all kinds of, uh, he created, not invented, he created gold and silver and precious stones and different things, the elements of this world and oil and things that he knew we would need. And he made the wood to grow that we might live in houses and, and the cotton to grow to make clothes and leather from cows and different things. I mean, he thought of it all right there. He knew it all. There's nothing takes him by surprise. And there's so much, we barely scratching the surface 
of what God has got on this earth right here. We, we've not conquered this whole earth. I mean, we probably not even explored every single thing on this earth and every bird and every creature right there. We don't know it all right there. It's plain and simple as that. God gave us dominion over the fishes of the sea. God gave us dominion over the animals. Somebody said, well, we come in their environment. Let me tell you something. That right there is not biblical. God created everything and blessed man to have dominion over that. I'm not against people building houses and neighborhoods and stuff like that. I don't particularly want to live in a neighborhood. I don't particularly want to live downtown or nothing like that. But for job's sake and things like that, we have to have those jobs. We have to have millionaires and, and people like that. The Bible says the poor will always be with you. The Bible talks about that. So we have to have millionaires to give us a job or thousandaires to give us a job. I'm not against corporations. I'm not against small businesses. I want them to thrive right there so the cost of living will go down so our wages can go up. I want the rich man to make money. God uses the rich. It's plain and simple as that. So don't let nobody come and say, well, the corp greedy corporations, and that's just a bunch of foolishness right there. We need them to make money so they'll give us money. I guarantee you when your boss is making money, he wants to bless his people unless he's just a greedy Scrooge. And they're not all greedy Scrooges right there. It's plain and simple as that. So let's read this again. He says in verse 21, And he that changes, and he changes the times and the seasons, and he removeth kings, and he setteth up kings, and he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding right there. God can do anything through us and for us right there. Above anything that we can ask, God can do it right there. There's nothing that God can't do. There's things he won't do. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie because God made it that way. Just plain and simple, that means God can't sin. Jesus can't sin right there. Just plain and simple as that. And by the way, Jesus and God, they're two different beings, but they're one God. Just like a jury, there's 12 on the jury right there that makes up the jury, but they're 12 in different individuals right there. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I don't know why people struggle with that kind of stuff. I know why it's just another lie of the devil. I mean, the devil has butchered this Bible through people because they let him right there. And then, 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 they, then they tell their children, then they tell their converts, and, and then uh, you can't hardly persuade them any different right there. God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. Then they say, there's no such thing as a rapture. Well, let me tell you, the Bible talks about it. The taking away, the mystery, the trumpet shall sound and dead of Christ shall rise first right there. And we see it all through the, the New Testament about the rapture of the church and when it takes place right there. There's some things in, in the Matthews that kind of confuses you, but you got to take the rest of the Bible as a whole right there. If you want a true understanding, you got to take the Bible as a whole. So, like salvation wasn't saved, always saved. You got to take it as a whole. You'll see it more clear. If you sit there and try to prove text and attack with one text or two texts, Right there, you can make this Bible say anything you want. But as a whole, the Bible teaches us once saved, always saved. And it teaches us as a whole, it teaches us the rapture takes place before the great tribulation, before the Son of Man, the, the, the Son of Perdition comes along. The church has got to be taken out of the way. He who let will let until be taken out of the way right there and will go on to be with the Lord as plain and simple as that. He says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Let me tell you something. God knows all your sins. Don't hide your sins. You won't prosper. Confess your sins to God. Tell God how you're weak. Tell him. Yeah, he already knows. But he, wants, he wants you to humble yourself. And he wants you to tell him. He wants you to be honest with him. Just cry out to him. If you're not saved, be honest with God. Just say, I'm not saved. Lord, I don't feel it. I just don't feel nothing in my heart. 
God save me. I know your son died on the cross. I know he was raised from the dead. God save me. Don't let me go to hell right there. And I was thinking about repentance this week. And some people say, well, if repentance is work. No, it ain't. You don't have to physically do nothing to repent like the Bible talks about for salvation. It's a, it's a softness that you get because you sought, you sinned against God. You realize that you're a sinner. The Bible says you're not going to come to the light unless your evil deeds be reproved right there. You got to see yourself as a sinner in need of a Savior. Let's use a little common sense. Some people say, well, Jesus got saved. Look, Jesus didn't have to get saved because he never sinned. We have to get saved and we're sorrowful that we sin against God and it works to salvation right there. And God has to grant it unto us, the Bible talks about. So we have to be sorrowful that we sin against God. We do it because we believe God. We, we say, well, I'm a sinner and I'm on my way to hell because the Bible says all sinners are going to hell. All unrighteous will not make it into the kingdom of God. It's plain and simple as that. So think about that just a little bit. You've got to be sorrowful that you sin against God. The Bible says in, in Psalms 34 that God saveth such as be of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. What's that mean? You're a contrite spirit, you're contrite, you're, you're sorrowful that you sin against God. You're humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God and saying, Lord, I believe your son. I'm a sinner. Help me, forgive me. Don't let me go to hell. That's what you soul's crying out. Your mouth might not say it, but your heart's saying it. You realize that you're a sinner. If you don't realize that you're a sinner, you're not going to get saved. Why? If, you're, if you don't think you know, have no need of a Savior or, you, or forgiveness right there, or you don't think you never sin right there, for one thing, the Bible says you're a liar and the truth's not in you. Read over there First 1 John. But if you think you never sin, that you don't need no Savior, well, you're not going to cry out to Jesus for, for salvation like the Bible says anyway. You've got to realize that you're a sinner. And how do you do that? How do you do that? Your evil bees be reproved. When John the Baptist come on the scene, he preached against sin. I mean, he preached salvation and everything, but he preached against sin. He, he blew the devil's brains out in his preaching. I mean, I don't think I'm as bold as John when I preach. I mean, he, he stood up before kings, before soldiers, before the religious brass hats of that day and said, you vipers, y'all need to get saved. <laughs> That's just plain and simple. You vipers, you snakes. He's talking about the religious folks of that day. They were religious and lost and thought they was already okay. And then he, sold the, he told the soldiers something too. You know, don't mistreat them. And the tax collectors, he preached against them. And then to the king, he said, King, it ain't lawful you take your brother's wife. John preached unto him right to his face. That didn't nothing stop John. He just kept on plowing, preaching. He said, if I have to die, I'm going to preach. And he did just that, and, and it was his time. John knew it was time to close it out because he said, I got to decrease that he may increase. John's job was to come on the scene and, and paved the way for Jesus to come on the scenes. You see what I mean? He was like to introduce the Lord. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. Right there. <laughs> and Jesus did. If, if, if the whole world wanted it, he would take away the sins of the whole world. It's plain and simple as that. And the Bible tells us that God's going to give everybody a chance, but those People that blaspheme the Holy Ghost, what is that? I hear people say, well, it's this and this, that. Well, the Bible plainly teaches you what it is. You speak a word against the Son of Man if it's given, forgiven you. But if you speak against the power of God or the Holy Ghost right there, it won't be forgiven you in this world, in the world to come. So you better watch it. I'm, I'm warning atheists, and I'm warning people of a different religion too. They don't realize the Holy Ghost is on us and you've got to be careful the way you speak out against it. It's just plain and simple as that. Or you'll blaspheme the Holy Ghost and the Bible says you won't get forgiveness in this life or the world to come. And you're not going to just drop dead. You might live another 20 years and still go to hell. 
I don't want you to. I hope you don't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. God knows your heart. I don't know if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost or not unless God tells me. And so far, he's not told me that people's blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And I hope he never tells me. You know what I mean? I don't want to know somebody went to hell. There's only one I know that went to hell, and that's uh, uh, Hitler. I believe the Lord told me that Hitler went to hell. You know what I mean? He didn't, he didn't believe in Jesus. He, he took down the crosses and put swastis up on the churches. There was one world religion, that was him. They all fell down before him right there. He's the savior of Germany. Well, look what a job he did. Destroyed Germany. I mean, for years to come, Germany always be remembered like that. Never a great nation no more. Just think about it, because they followed that lie. And that, that happens in America, too. It just didn't ever happen on that scale. But that happens in America. That happens in all kinds of different countries. they are following a lie right there. People better watch out. You know, they think just because they got good help now, your health can fall apart. And who you going to call upon when, when your kids start dying and getting sick? First thing you know, God, have mercy on my children. You know, you think about that. God, have mercy on us. Oh, God. That's by nature. You, you automatically think like that. <laughs> Nobody has to teach you. Oh, God, have mercy. You know, just think about that just a little bit. He says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers. And I thank the Lord for saving my soul and give me that free gift of eternal life right there. Plus or minus nothing, he saved me. He's my friend. He's my best friend. He walks with me, talks with me. I don't understand it sometimes why God still communes with me, but he does. He loves us right there. He fellowships with us. He's around. Some people think, well, that was just the devil, you know, that the Lord's not using, Brother Bobby. <laughs> How foolish can they be? Right there, open up your ears. It says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Right there. When you have a big problem, cry out to Jesus. Let me tell you, I've been studying a little bit in Exodus right there. And y'all know why God delivered them? Well, first of all, he remembered the faithfulness of Abraham. And for Isaac and uh, Jacob's sake, the Bible says he remembered that. But what did the children of Israel do? They began to groan to the Lord and cry out to God because of the affliction that they was in. And God heard them cry. And he raised up a man called Moses to come deliver them out of Pharaoh's hands. And God changed their life right there. I mean, totally, he changed them. They, they were slaves one day. And next day, they, they was free right there. Just think about it. You don't know where you're going to be in 20 years. You think you might do this and do that. Just look back in your life 20 years later. What you've done did. Where you've been. God had a plan for you this whole time. Right there. And you kept getting in the way. Just think about that. Right there. I appreciate what God gave us. I had no clue I was going to preach this today. But he enlightened my eyes. I flipped the Bible open. And I was thinking Daniel. Daniel's the lion's den. And I thought, well, I, Lord, can I make a thing out of Daniel's the lion's den? He, I opened up to Daniel chapter 2. And these two verses right here, he shined them unto me. And I had no clue what I was going to say. But he spoke to me today. He met with us today. Thank God for the hat. I appreciate you listening. I love you today. In Jesus' precious name, amen.